Okay, so I wanted to re go back over um, this example and well, this proof I wanted to go back over to make sure just to provide a little more clarity to it than what I did in class. All right. And note that um, we're proving that the automorphism of G is a group under function composition, right? Because that was earlier in the notes. OK, so the book, the problem, the book just says prove it's a group but it's under function composition, all right? So, which is why we use the approach we used in class. Okay, so note that, so we can start our proof, but we're gonna note that alpha and beta, if we're, let's say they belong to the automorphism of G, then because alpha and beta, we're assuming they're isomorphisms from G to G, right? Automorphism, then alpha beta, this is from something we already know, is one to one and on to okay we already know that so we just have to first we need to show the alpha beta we're showing closure here and we're showing the alpha beta belongs okay so this is the closure part of showing that it's a group okay so that's what um we're doing here okay so that wasn't as clear when I did in class. Okay. Um, but that's also, well, two things showing closure will also, well, let me put it like this. We're showing closure by showing it's and it's homomorphic and I think I believe that's a word homomorphic hopefully I'm not making that up um, okay so we'll say well alpha and beta of X Y right well that's equal to alpha we're under composition of functions right so that's alpha beta of X Y since beta we know beta belongs to the automorphism of G, right? So beta is a homomorphism. And so since beta is a homomorphism, we can rewrite this as beta of X times beta of Y. Well, that equals what? Alpha beta of X because alpha is also, so I'll make a note. So this is since beta is a homomorphism, okay? And this is because alpha is a homomorphism that we have alpha beta of X times alpha beta of Y. Okay. Therefore the homomorph so thus alpha beta belongs to the automorphism of G, which, so this is proven homomorphism, but it's also showing closure. Okay. For, associativity so ie this is alpha composed with beta composed with say gamma equals alpha composed with beta composed with gamma well we know since g is associative because it's a group right this will always be true Okay, so now we have identity, all right? Because again, going back to just groups in general, you need to, if it's not already implied or given, you need to show closure, associativity, identity, and inverse, okay? So let sigma belong to G such that sigma goes from G to G with, let's say sigma X equals X, right? That's our identity mapping. Well, clearly it's an automorphism, right? And you can quickly prove that, but we already know the identity function is one to one, is on two, it has preservation, right? Okay, so for all to, to show that it is the identity mapping, right? Then we say, well, for all, let's say alpha that belongs to the automorphism of G, 
alpha composed with sigma is the same as sigma composed with alpha. And since that's the identity map mapping, we're just going to get back alpha. Okay. Um, so hence, sigma is the identity element of the automorphism of G. Okay. Inverse is our final thing we need to prove. Well, let alpha belong to the automorphism of G. Um, we know the alpha inverse belongs to G, right? Since alpha belongs to G. Okay, so that's, but we need to show the alpha inverse belongs to the automorphism of G, okay? Well, since alpha belongs to the automorphism of G, then then that tells us that alpha is one to one, one to two, and preserves the homomorphism property. So if alpha does that, then by previous theorem, we can say that alpha inverse is one to one and on two. And there's um, probably in foundation notes. I don't know if it's in this book, but there's something that says, if F is a bijection, then F inverse is a bijection, okay? Um, all right, so we have that. So really all we need to show is that alpha inverse preserves the homomorphism property and then we've shown it belongs to the automorphism of G. So we just need to show that, and I think I'm gonna do this, I think I'm gonna do it on another page. So we wanna show that alpha inverse of x, y equals alpha inverse of x times alpha inverse of y. Okay, so i.e. Our, our homomorphism property. There's different ways you can look at this. So one way, I think this is the way I did it in class. So we're gonna rewrite x, y as alpha of alpha inverse of x times alpha times alpha inverse of y, right? And that's just by, that's, we know those two statements, equations are equivalent. These two expressions are equivalent, are the same because of properties of functions in this inverse, right? Well, because we know that alpha is a homomorphism, right? We can say this is equal to alpha of, how did I do this? Oh, alpha of alpha inverse of x times alpha inverse of y, right? And that's since alpha is a homomorphism, okay? Thus, we can rewrite xy as alpha, alpha inverse of xy, right? That's the same, that's the same as xy. And we could say this now equals alpha of alpha inverse of x times alpha inverse of y. Okay, well, by cancellation, alpha inverse of xy equals alpha inverse of x times alpha inverse of y. Therefore, um, the automorphism of G is a group under composition of functions. All right, I'm hoping this makes a lot more sense and I will see you soon.